Hello, everyone. Welcome to Peer-to-Peer -Peer Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Willie Morales. And on today's show, I got Martin Sines from, he's the managing partner of BQuest Funds. Martin, thank you so much for being on Peer-to-Peer -Peer Real Estate Show. How are you? Good, good, William. Thanks for having me on. No, it's my pleasure. So, you know, one of the first questions, Martin, I like to ask everybody is, and for you, were you always entrepreneurial? Was this something, getting into real estate, was this something that was in your blood at the age of five? <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I, and I wrote about that in one of my books. Is uh, age of five, I, I just went out in the front yard by myself with no, no direction, supervision. I cleaned a bunch of rocks in my front lawn and went door to door selling the rocks to the neighbors. And, and so we had some of the neighbors purchase the rocks and then they went over and told my parents what I had done. But always, you know, in elementary school and, and high school, always thinking about, you know, how to earn money, how to, um, how to work, you know, how to work a job. So I always had a strong work ethic. I, I wasn't real academic in those, in those uh, days. So I was more kind of money driven and, uh, and work driven. Did you get advice as a youngster on how to become your own boss? Was that something, did anybody give you any type of advice at all? I wish. My, my father worked in uh, corporate America and my mom was a school teacher. Okay. So, I mean, they gave me a lot of, a lot of, a lot of what I needed to um, kind of build a foundation for myself and, and uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of quality character, um, you know, attributes. However, entrepreneurism was not one of them. I had to kind of find my way at a later point in life into entrepreneurism. And um, how did you go about that, though, early on? Was it a lot of reading, a lot of just uh, following maybe some of your mentors that you might have met, might not have met? How did you go about that? So, um, you know, I, I, read, I read books from individuals like Ty mm -hmm. Hicks and, and their authors that just wrote about um, creating a side hustle for oneself, creating mailbox money. And, and um, so, you know, that always kind of piqued my interest while I was working a job. But it wasn't until I got fired from a corporate job in 2003 where I, or I really realized, my wife and I, that uh, this just wasn't working. I, I needed to be doing my own thing. And I wasn't good at politics within a, a corporate setting. And um, so, that you know, that that kind of was the the changing point in my life. And, you know, obviously I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad and, uh, you know, some of the other greats. I mean, isn't that like the standard uh, <laughs> reading book for for uh, for uh, wannabe entrepreneurs? I mean, that's like the standard uh, book. If that doesn't light a fire in your uh, under your under your butt, you know, nothing will. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I need to reread that book. It's been a few years since I read it. So how did you get into real estate? Uh, how did you get into that uh, sector? So, so after getting um, fired from the corporate job, my wife and I were researching, you know, things that we could do f from a, you know, starting a small business perspective. And I always had a um, fascination with real estate and I was doing a lot of research. I was going to different webinars and so it never, you know, it, you know, what I kind of gathered from all my, all my education at that point was that I needed to create cash flow. I needed to start a business, create, you know, sustainable cash flow, and then turn that cash flow into, you know, landlording or, or convert it into, um, you know, something real estate wise, you know, to, to create a velocity effect. So um, that's what I did. I, I, my wife and I started a museum exhibit company where we sold, uh, you know, basically designed, fabricated, and installed museum exhibits for the federal government. And we, we did that nationwide. And we went through me mega struggles financially in the first three years. I mean, we were beyond poor. We were in the negative. And um, how did you get out of that, though? I mean, what was your mindset? I mean, going those three years, because that that'll defeat maybe 90 to 95 percent of, of people. The, it, it's interesting because um, we didn't we started out with a decision in mind, and that is we weren't going to settle. So so a lot of times small businesses, they open the doors, you, you know, whether it's a retail setting or, or some home-based business. And they look to sell to anyone who's, who has a jingle in their pockets and they'll take money, you know, any which way they can, because you know, that cash flows, the life, lifeblood of the business. Yeah. 
what we did is we forewent that. We, we said to ourselves that we wanted to sell directly to the federal government. We wanted to go head to head with the big boys. We wanted those clients to be our clients because at the end of the day, the pot of gold is when you, when you are close the, in closer proximity, you are to the end client who has the money, who has the deep pockets, then, then there's significant value in that. So when you're removed, if you're a sub of a sub to the prime, then, yeah. then you're more removed, right? So, so you have more risk and you may get lower hanging fruit in terms of jobs, <clears throat> but, um, but you're getting scraps at the end of the day. So um, we kind of made that decision and it was a hard decision because there was a lot of low hanging fruit we left along the way. However, um, when it clicked, it really clicked. I mean, we, we locked into some federal contracts um, with the Pentagon. We, um, you know, it, it was almost an overnight thing. We went from just being broke behind on our mortgage to buying a commercial building and move, moving our company into that building. Wow. And then, that's, and then from there, you just started your real estate investing career. So, yes. yeah, go ahead. No, from, yeah, landlording. We went right yeah. into landlording. So we wanted to buy um, properties. We bought the neighboring building. We, brought other, we bought other commercial and residential properties in the D.C. area. However, what we realized from that is that small business ownership doesn't give you freedom of time. It really just it weighs you down to 100-hour work weeks. And, and what we found with landlording is it didn't deliver the cash flow that my wife and I needed or, or that met our aspirations in life financially. So, yeah. so we were kind of at a sticking point as, in terms of what to do from that point. But we still own the properties and landlording's a great annuity play. It just didn't, we didn't convert it into the needed cash flow that we were thinking it was going to be. Right. So right now you guys or uh, your company, Bequest Funds, are in the mortgage note investment industry. So for my listeners, can you exp uh, explain uh, what a note is? Sure. So a promissory note is, think about it this way. You go into, you, you, you want to buy a house for yourself or, or your family and you go into a bank or some lending institution, which is also termed an originator, mm -hmm. and you apply for a mortgage. And they, if they accept you and what they'll do is they'll give you two documents. They'll give you a promissory note, which means you, they're lending you money and you in exchange are promising to repay that money given a certain set of terms, right? Like the interest rate, the monthly payments, late fees and things like that. Right. Now, with that said, they are also going to give you a document that's going to be called a mortgage or a deed of trust. And what that security instrument is going to do is it's going to tie that promise to the property in the form of collateral. And so, and so what happens though, is that originators, they, they originate these types of loans. However, some portion of these loans that they originate over time become defaulted. And, and at some point, the bank is going to bundle those into a tranche and sell them into the secondary market, which is essentially a flea market for mortgages. So where, where you have different hedge funds that are buying and selling um, mortgage loans. And it's kind of crude, but it, it's true. It's factual. Yeah and, yeah. so and so, you know, we operate in the secondary mortgage space. And we buy uh, pools of performing mortgages that did have some scratch and dent. Um, qualities to them. And we also buy distressed debt as well in the secondary space. Okay, so you do both. So I, I just want to touch base back on your first property, your, your, your landlord uh, experience. So when you first bought it, was that your first investment? Um, the, um, the, the, that multifamily building? Yeah, I'd say it's the first real estate investment. It, my first investment was investing in education and then investing in a small business. Yes, but so, yes. So, you know, like always, and I'm pretty sure you run into this when uh, you had a newbie real estate investor, they always, uh, their issue is uh, finding the money. So if you don't mind going into how did you purchase it? How, uh, how did you come up with the funds for that first purchase? So I did it exactly how... I had um, envisioned it to happen, and that is start a small business and and uh, 
drum up profit from that business and then use that profit to put as a down payment for the real estate transaction. However, I didn't anticipate the three years of, of, you know, uh, hard work and and I didn't, I didn't envision like, you know, making payroll day of, and, you know, praying that the card would go through at the grocery store. I didn't envision all that, but, but I did envision profits from a small business by a real estate property. Um, However, those hard points also kind of built my character and made me who I am today. I don't have certain worries and, and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I have a little bit more armor to me as a result of that. But the uh, landlording experience was my first. I've never, I've never rehabbed a property. Right. I mean, but think about it, Martin. You go in three years where it's blood, sweat, and tears, and and you know, then you finally turn the corner. And I think, and this is a great uh, as as a lesson for all of us is you persevered, you were persistent, and you were consistent. You never gave up. You know. And I think that's, a, that's something that uh, my audience and myself definitely takes, uh, takes into account that, wow, this guy just kept on uh, keeping on. Well, it, it's not so, so it's interesting because when we got profitable and, and you know, it, it's been great ever since financially for myself, um, it, it, it didn't mean that the work and the stress and all that was gone. I mean, it right. just meant I had some more money. I had money in my pocket. The, right, you know, right. The, still the, the deadlines, the, the rigorous nature of things, proposal writing and, and cutthroat nature of things were still present. So we sold that company in 2013 um, and took back a business note, which is how I actually got introduced into the secondary mortgage market space because I actually sold part of that business note to another investor. No, that's great. I, I my first investment, Martin, was in 2017, and I bought my first. It was cash. It was in Pennsylvania. I was bank owned, and when I bought it, I resold it for the price that the bank was selling it for. I bought it for eight thousand, sold it for twenty seven, twenty eight, and I hold the note. So when I saw that you were, you know, we're going to be on the podcast, I was excited. So <laughs> after saying that. You and just got to do that a hundred more times, William. I know I did it once. I need to do that. Well. <laughs> exactly. You got to, you could be like, Oh, I do that weekly. <laughs> I want to do that daily, but weekly I take. Um, you talked about performing and non-performing notes. So for my audience, what's a non-performing note? If you could talk more about that. Sure. Sure. So this is a, a mortgage note that let's say the borrower has, has gone into default and they haven't made a payment in four or five years. So I will go and purchase, yeah, I'll go and purchase that mortgage at 20, 30, 40 cents on the dollar and then work with the borrower to help them stay in their home with the payment they can afford. Now I can give them a payment they can afford because I purchased it at a discount. So I'm able to make certain concessions to make sure that, um, you know, I give them a plan that, that, uh, that they're good with, that, that it, it works for me from a return perspective. And so everyone wins and the borrower gets to stay in their home, which is the most important thing while creating a cash flow stream for me, which is also uh, pretty important. No, definitely. So if you don't mind me asking, um, so how do you find these non-performing notes? Is it something that you, uh, you have relationships with the bank or do you just send out like the, like the old school way is sending out um, through list source or these source, you know, these uh, list uh, companies and you just pretty much uh, taking a crapshoot when you send out a, uh, let's say an absentee homeowner or, or just a homeowner list. Do you do that? Yeah. So actually everything's relationship based. So, um, you know, we, we focus, uh, and it was really kind of, I, I did a self-assessment in 2017 when I wrote Note Investing Made Easier, which um, became an Amazon bestseller. But really at the time, um, I, I laid out exactly how I get these notes. It's no uh, secret. Okay. So I focus on uh, building an identity you know, where, whereby I have uh, competency, I understand what I'm doing, understand what my buy box is, buying parameters, yeah. understand I have marketing in line with from a branding perspective. 
And, and then um, I go through a process uh, with a seller outreach where I'm reaching out to these hedge funds and, and other players in the secondary space. And I, I'm, I create a seller's matrix. I'm tracking progress. Uh, I have goals. I have activities. And then, and then I use a CRM system on the back end to go and just, just manage that. And so, um, you know, through the course of time, you know, you'll see deal flow uh, come to you. And then, uh, and then you have to act on the deal flow. So you have to have all your systems for due diligence okay. in place prior to the deals coming in so that you're able to vet them. Plus you have to have capital lined up. So, um, you know, if anyone's ever, if anyone's interested in pursuing a, the career of node investing, um, you know, check out node investing made easier. That's probably a good starting point or, or read other node investing books. I think that's always the, the good thing. Uh, stay away from the white noise, um, like on Facebook and places where people are just kind of hitting you based yeah. on what their angle is. You know, try to just, just read, you know, from an educational standpoint, some books where authors just kind of, you know, lay out what their day-to-day -day life is like and, and, you know, how to put something together for yourself. Yeah, I want to definitely touch base on your book. Um, so you mentioned that when you buy the non-performing notes, you get it for 20 or 30 cents on the dollar and something could be cheaper, maybe a little higher. And when you talk to the homeowner, um, it, can you give us a couple of steps? Like how do you get them to agree to start paying you again? Yeah. So it's a really a combination effect. You know, we work with licensed servicers. So a lot okay. of these servicers are sending out monthly statements. They're they're They have a call center. So they're receiving inbound calls from the borrowers that get monthly statements <clears throat> and they're like, Hey, you know, what do I need to do to kind of get back on track? Um, sometimes we do legal remedies. There is a valid lien on the property. So, um, you know, any valid lien on any property can foreclose. They have the right to foreclose. Right. So, um, you know, we can go and send out some legal notices. Um, but at the end of the day, we have a very compassionate approach when we talk to the bar in that our whole mission is to help keep them in their home. And we're very open with them about that. And so when borrowers realize that we're genuine and we're trying to work with them and, and we're on their side and we're not this big, bad bank that's just trying to, you know, lay the hammer down on them and, and we're actually flexible, we're actually can, can adjust the monthly payment to lower it down to meet, you know, what they have for disposable income, right. then it, th then it kind of flips. Right. And then we start cultivating a very healthy relationship and guess what happens with healthy relationships? Borrowers uh, tend to make payments to us more than they would to other people when there is a, a relationship and some some level of accountability in place yeah no i love that i love the fact that you're talking to these uh to the, to the to the owner or to the borrower and just say hey listen we'll work with you what can you afford this is what we could do this is what we need from you mm -hmm. so i love that so i know you talked about um for someone that's new that they want to get into it i guess it depends on the note but if somebody wants to get into it, is there money that they need? Or, I mean, are, are we looking to, for them to get uh, private money to get into business? What, is there such a, is there a ballpark figure that someone could start with? Is it a couple of thousand or they need more? Or it depends on where in the country they're looking to buy uh, these type of non-performing notes. So, so if someone's really serious, and and they're looking to make a business out of this um i would i would suggest you know they need about 50 to 75k mm -hmm. of capital to really just make um to really kind of pave their way forward they need to get formal education um they they you know to learn the pitfalls there's a lot of nuances in this industry that will just kind of clean your clock yeah. you know it sounds great right i get on oh buy a note, you know, 30 cents on the dollar, you, you, you know, you'll be swimming in it in a year yeah. later. Like, no, um, buy a note for 30 cents on the dollar and find out the next day that your lien's not valid. Find out the next day that they file bankruptcy and are stripping you out. Find out that, um, you know, th that you're missing signatures on the, on the collateral and that's going to, that's going to bust you out in court. Y you know what I mean? Like, like there's just so many pitfalls to it. So um, you really need to go in, with a good foundation from an educational perspective and you know attend conferences get your branding right all that's going to cost some money so you need to have money and commitment i, I mean that makes the world go round right i no agree 
Did um, what's happening in the world today with the pandemic? Did it affect business in any way? And if it did, what what did you learn from it? I learned that don't believe the hype. There's um, so much news out there. Uh, you know, hey, go call your lender and ask for forbearance. You know, stop paying your mortgage. Um, you know, stop paying your rent. And what we have found out is our collectability rates are at all time highs. And and what we're finding when we're talking to bars and because we have you know high touch environment, we talk to our, our bars, we're building relationships with them. They're open with us. And what we find out is that they're valuing their home more than they've ever valued their home. They're feeling good, you know, equity spikes in the country, there's shortage of inventory. They're they're fixing the lawn, they're at home working out of home now. So they're staring at that that closet that needs reorganizing. They're they're remodeling their kitchen, they're building their deck while they should be working at their job and <laughs> doing all these other things. And 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 they're gaining a deeper appreciation for their home. So that's the last thing they want to lose. And they're gonna do whatever they need to do to make payments on it. So we're finding the opposite of what the noise is that's out there no I, and you're one of many people that i've interviewed said the same thing that business is uh skyrocketing people are paying people are doing what they're supposed to do tell us a little bit more about your book is your book more which is called note investing made easier is it like an how-to book or obviously that's not the only thing needed you need more education but can you talk about uh, more about your book Sure. So I've actually written four books within the note industry. Oh, please <laughs> so, talk about so all of speak, them. <laughs> will, I'll give you kind of the, the highlights on each one. I mean, you can go to amazon.com and just punch in my name, Martin Signs, and you will find uh, all the books will pop up. Yeah, but, definitely um, put on the show notes. Yeah. Note Investing Made Easier is just a, a book that just runs through my day. Now, my day is very different now because we buy millions of dollars more of mortgage loans than, than we did, you know, four or five years ago. Right. But um, essentially, you know, that's the day, the day in the life of a note investor. So, mm -hmm. so and it kind of gives you an expectation to look forward to. Um, the next book is Real Estate Note Investing Mentorship. So I started mentoring. I mentor a few people a year and hold a few workshops a year. I'm not a mass trainer by any, by any means. Like mm. I may do one workshop every quarter and, and I have people fly in and see me or zoom me. And so this was just kind of walks people through what, what it takes to, um, to be formally educated in the note space and, and some of the things you need to do to protect yourself so that, so that you mitigate risk. Um, then I wrote uh, Note Investing Fundamentals, um, which is one of my favorites, uh, in that I really laid out the case for why note you need to set up a note business if you're going to be a successful note investor. It doesn't pay to be a novice. I mean, think of it like um, think of it like the rehabbers that that you may know about. Yeah. You know, they 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 churn and burn, right? They they pick up a few houses, they're renovating them and, and and just putting all the sweat into it and then they sell it and then they're looking for the next few houses. And they do that for 20 years and they're and they're just butt tired yeah. at the end of and they're, and they're broke. You know, most of them are just kind of broke at the end of the day. And then you know a few rehabbers <laughs> that are have a mass operation, right? They got teams in place, they buy in certain demographics, you know, you know, they got their stuff together their systems and, and and these guys and gals are you know turning out a hundred properties every every quarter or what have you and, and so and so that's kind of like the same mindset that um, you know I put across in, in note investing fundamentals is how to actually set, set up a business for yourself so you can scale and um, last year I wrote cash flow dojo which is more of a general book on building one's home on multiple mm -hmm. streams of income. So I'm making the case for why, um, you know, single income is dead in this country has been for decades. I agree. Dual income is dead. That's what a lot of people don't even know. People think like, oh, okay, got wifey at work, you know, hubby's at work, you know, we'll, we'll make it out somehow. We got, you know, we're, we're getting double bang, you know, double banging on our, um, with the income, with the income coming in uh, monthly. But at the end of the way that, that the prices are going, the way that inflation, taxes, everything's shooting up, you need much more than two streams of income coming into your family 
And so it's your duty as, as um, you know, someone running a family that, that you need to go out and seek additional streams of income, given what you've learned in life, what your expertises are. And uh, people just need to step up and do more for their families. And I know it's a little preachy and judgmental. No, no. That's I, just what I, I believe. No, but you know what, Don Martin? I believe the same thing. You've got to have multiple streams of income. I mean, if you're going to invest in the stock market, great. But then you need a, a couple of other side hustles. I agree, three to four different uh, side hustles to bring in money. So we got note investing made easier, real estate note mentoring. Is that the real one? estate note investing mentorship? And, and, okay. <laughs> uh, note investing fundamentals and cash flow dojo. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll definitely put those on the show notes. Now, uh, besides your favorite, oh, in fact, I wanted to backtrack a little bit. Now, in any of these books, um, do you go into details like how people can find notes in any of? Uh, I definitely suggest to get all four. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put in tips, but here's the thing, where, where uh, notes are the most evident, I mean, you could go to places like Paperstack, Loan MLS, um, you, there's websites out there, online market exchanges, you can go there, you could buy a note right today, but here it is, the lowest hanging fruit is not always the best for you, yeah. and, and so um, to, get, to get notes at higher quality, that you need to have relationships, and before you have relationships, you need to have identity. And you need to have your marketing game and your whole branding, branding game put together well. And you need to have a systematic approach by which you're researching and connecting with the right sellers that sell notes within your buying parameters. Gotcha. And, and so once you have that whole system down pat and you're working, it, it's not just enough to have the system, right? You have to work it daily. Yeah. And then you have to track your results and make adjustments along the way. And then and only then will you start to see um, deal flow, at which, you know, you'll do well financially. From. No, you got to do it. It's a business from A to Z. Uh, besides your four books, what other books you like? We you talk about Rich Dad Poor Dad. Any other book you like to recommend? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I'm reading a great book right now, Capital Attraction by Matthew Burke. Um, another one's Hunter Thompson um, has written a book on, uh, gosh, I don't know the name, but just kind of raising capital. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Michael Gerber, E-Myth is always a favorite. Great book, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, th those are probably... Uh, um, there's a, I don't know, Steven Stevenson, I believe his name is, but Mentored by a Millionaire. That's a really good book if for, okay. for anyone, you know, kind of looking for, for help from a spiritual perspective. Because at the end of the day, and this is probably a whole other podcast, but um, I could go on the spiritual tip with you. And, and, and to me, like all of this is very spiritual. <laughs> well, we'll have to have you back on soon. First of all, Martin, thank you so much for being on Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. I really appreciate it. My God, you gave us so many golden nuggets. And before you go, what's the best way people can uh, find you? Just email me, martin at bqfunds.com or visit noteinvestingmadeeasier.com and you can learn about um, you know, some of the training I have for note investing, or you can just reach out if you're interested in our income fund, which pays a, an 8% annual return and makes payments monthly. No, sounds good. Well, again, Martin, thank you so much for being on the show. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, William. No, it's my pleasure. Thanks. Well, everyone, that was Martin Signs, and you can find him at bqfunds.com. That's B as in boy, Q as in question, funds.com. Martin, thank you so much for being on Peer-to-Peer -peer Real Estate Show. Really appreciate it. You can find me at peer-to-peerrealestate.com. -peer That's peer to number two, peerrealestate.com. Check out our past shows and check out our blog. Also, please go to Apple Podcasts. Look for us at Peer to Peer Real Estate Podcast. Please subscribe, leave a review. Tell us how we can make this show better. And before I go, guys, there's a couple more things. Do not give up on your dreams. Fight for it, guard it, protect it. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. And I really believe if you keep the momentum going, good things will happen. On behalf of Peer to Peer Real Estate Show, I'm Willie Morales. Until next time, thanks, everybody. Have a great day, and please stay safe. Bye.